since uh, our earlier discussions we have seen that in the process of management studies we have to understand various aspects and an important aspect of managing is people and diversity among people and this has become a very important aspect and a movement rather and in today's discussion we are taking up this issue. So, diversity at workplace this is what is the thing for today and we will try to see that how that makes an impact in the whole process of management issues. Diversity has become a movement as I said. One of the important and larger challenges facing human resource management today is adapting to workforce that is important. And this diversity movement is, uh, uh, is talks about this talks about the small percentage or the workforce which are there in that organization yeah. for and most of the parts of the organizations may be ignored. So, we are looking at that particular small workforce in that organization. So far organizations and human resource management have been adopting the melting pot approach to differences and this melting pot approach assumes that employees who are different would sometimes automatically adapt and assimilate to, to the demands of their workplace, but that does not happen and that is why the, the issue of diversity becomes important for us. This assumption is based on the fact that distance and national borders are rapidly disappearing and a barrier in business interactions and the concept of global village is surely and firmly taking shape. So, we are thinking that uh, we everyone can adapt to the organizational situation very fast, that is our assumption. But we are looking at what happens really. It is however recognized that employees do not set aside their cultural values preferences, lifestyles and uh, the regional background when they come to work. Robbins has said that and that is true. When we have uh, so many companies coming to India for work, we do not leave our Indian culture and our expectation even though we try to adapt to the new new expectation and new technology and other things, even then our culture impinges on that. So, that becomes an important issue for those who are uh, starting a business in India. For example, uh, learning the language. One, one simple example, if you are going to a, an interior place, and uh, if you do not learn you know the local language then the difficulty. So, the melting pot assumption is being replaced by the approach that recognizes and values differences. So, this is about the individual differences, racial differences we are just coming to that. So, the differences of all types that, that we are discussing today. The dimensions of workforce diversity that uh, if we look at these have both macro and micro perspective. Uh, in a few minutes from now I am going to give you some idea about what various authors have said about it and what researchers have said about it. So, that you uh, start appreciating the fact that 
Many people are concerned with diversity, a lot of research is being done and that is really important for us as the, as the practitioners and the students of uh, management studies. So, let us uh, begin with uh, some of these studies. Carolyn Mann, they have emphasized that race, religion, color, gender, national origin, disability, sexual orientation, age, education, uh, geographical um, origin, background and uh, skill characteristics are some of the uh, aspects of uh, diversity. People are diverse in terms of some of these aspects. Then uh, uh, Jenneberg the, and race they have, we have found, they, uh, they have said that gender, religion, language, age, education, educational credentials, family background are some of the uh, sources of diversity. Similarly, when we find that, uh, uh, that uh, the issue uh, is coming up and some of those are some of the factors you will find are, are uh, common in uh, some of these researches which are done all, uh, all um, over the globe. So, here we find that this institute has done, gen they have, they have uh, finally said that gender, age, culture, religion, uh, different um, uh, abilities in fact and the geographic origin, these are some of the important factors as the factors of diversity. Hemphill and Haynes, they have said that race, religion, sex, national origin, age and disability, disability, marital status, education and appearance uh, are the different uh, sources of diversity. Then uh, we come to Linda's study. Uh, in this study, race, gender, disabled uh, people and advancement, these are disabled uh, people in advancement, uh, these are some of the study uh, factors. The specialist job that people do and the organizational hierarchy in which people are, the training received, the culture prevalent and the operating field domain and market are explaining the diversity according to one of the studies of IMR. Then uh, Jackson and Alvarez, they have said that gender, culture and age are important. Jain and Verma, they have said that women, visible minorities, aboriginals, people and people with disabilities are diversity. Johnson has said age, gender, religion these are the factors of diversity, whereas Rosenbach has said that personalities, attitude, sex and race are factors of diversity. So, what we find that these uh, factors, in fact there are a couple of um, other factors which uh, I have listed here. This is by Kirby and Richard, and this, that is uh, race, gender and the ethnic background. Then Luthans has said age, gender, ethnic, religion, uh, religious background, education, disability. And uh, then we uh, move on to uh, uh, Mary Gentile who says that race, gender, age, culture, religion, situational uh, identities uh, of members of a particular group 
organizations and the multiple identities of an individual are important. Uh, Stephen Robin, he has said that culture, gender, race and the ethnicity, these are important dimensions of diversity. Then uh, we also uh, have uh, the factors like social categories of race, gender, age, ethnicity and the functional categories of knowledge, skill, abilities, values, belief, attitudes and personality, cognitive factors and the behavioral style. So, this is emphasized by Tejfal in his study and uh, so we are finding that the list uh, there is an addition, there are additions in the list of the factors or dimensions of diversity. Uh, Thatcher and uh, Spen, he has said, they have said that gender, uh, ethnic and the racial diversity. So, the race also becomes an important factor whereas Roosevelt has said race, gender, sex and age as the dimensions of diversity. Venkat Ratnam and Chandra in India, they have said that gender, age, education, religion, caste and language are the dimensions of diversity. And Varmani uh, again a study from India has said regional background, language, caste and gender are dimensions of diversity. John has talked about race, color, sex, religion and national origin as dimensions of diversity. And from here we have just tried to depict this you know in the form of this, uh, uh, this uh, you can say uh, model to talk about the issue of diversity. We have discussed that how various researchers and thinkers and authors have given us uh, the, their views you know on the dimensions of diversity. We have seen that it begins from the personal on aspects like the personality, uh, their cognitive systems to their attitudes. On the one hand, the social systems, uh, the race, and the other uh, characteristics that we might have and uh, so many other uh, issues have also been uh, taken up you know in this whole issue of diversity. So, here in this uh, model we have tried to uh, present that there are functional diversities, there are socio-cultural diversities, there are demographic diversities and there are uh, inner dimensions of diversity and you can see whatever we have discussed so far we have in this model we have tried to sort of uh, 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 combine all those to present a, um, an integrated comprehensive uh, uh, sort of a model we can say uh, that is the the in essence the essence of all those studies that we are trying to present you know in this one and you can See once again, if I repeat uh, the, the, uh, those uh, aspects maybe very quickly, uh, so that you know uh, a recap of what has been said, otherwise you might miss you know some of the uh, issues that the functional uh, aspects that we are talking about, that the, it is the unit uh, and the uh, hierarchy and the functional level, the management status and so on. Coming to the socio-cultural, we are talking about religion, race, caste, culture, ethnic uh, background, language, nationality, um, etc. Then demographic, we are coming to age, gender, educational background, geographic location, etc. And coming to the, uh, the inner dimensions personality that is the individual at the level of individual, personality, uh, physical ability, personal and uh, perhaps the recreational habits which will come also in that, in that, uh, in that group. So, what we are trying to understand is that when you are trying to manage um, a system, 
one has to be uh, aware of this fact that diversity plays an important role in the whole process of work performance, which is the main theme, work performance, productivity, effectiveness, these are some of the main themes that we are talking about, why management to answer that question. And in addition to this, of course, the issue of survival and growth that we have discussed earlier. So, coming from the point of view of uh, the performer, people management, which is, which is an important theme in today's uh, uh, management studies, because they say that the other resources might deplete and they might become, oh, they might deplete, you know, over time. But human resources do not deplete. In fact, in human resources become assets over time. Because, because of the human development, the human mind, the experience that you have. So, there is a difference between how do we really deal with different kinds of resources in an organization. And here when we are discussing diversity, we are trying to uh, discuss the, the human resources as the assets of the organization, because they may have whatever other resources, it is the best type of people who are going to give us the best results. And that is why diversity has to be dealt with very, very uh, carefully. And uh, from here, I move on to talk to you about that uh, what uh, authors have said uh, about theorizing uh, based on, you know, these research studies and there had been lot of theorizing and uh, there are supporting theories and works which are suggesting that uh, we need to look at this, you know, more seriously than ever before. And there is theory of competitive advantage by Cox and Blake. Uh, there is theory of functional and social identity by Teichfeld, and in their studies we have already seen earlier. There is theory of social dilemmas by Snyder, Seidy and others. There is a theory of attraction, selection, attrition theory by Snyder. And, uh, then, uh, of course, the definitional model by Gentile, systems perspective and cultural diversity by Hofstede, and then the, the uh, theory of strategic human resource, uh, this is by uh, Nankavis. Then the empirical study of, uh, of others also support the same theory. Then uh, there has been a survey uh, in USA by Motwani 1993 and survey sponsored by IBM and uh, this was 1992. These also support uh, some of the, the works related to diversity in um, management. Now, also the surveys like Robinson and Dan and Dachant 1997 and in Indian industry by Sharma and Sharma, 1998. And uh, we will also talk about diversity as the HR perspective. In fact, in the earlier one, the uh, survey that we were talking about, I will I'll discuss a little bit more, you know, about the survey in, in a short while from now, because that was a survey we had conducted uh, here in one of the IT sectors. Now, the diversity as the HR imperative. When we are looking at diversity, a few more studies I will give you an idea, because only then uh, perhaps you know you will be able to understand and appreciate that how the whole diversity movement has become so important in the whole, uh, whole uh, management thinking. So, uh, here uh, now, we, we can see that uh, Babinoz's study expands the breadth of the perspectives and the ideas available to the organization in making decisions. So, so for decision making, 
we have to understand the uh, the kind of uh, um, diversity perspectives that uh, we have. Then Bowler's uh, study, Bowler has suggested that diversity is one of the 10 most significant changes uh, to impact the 21st century workforce. We are moving in the next millennium and uh, if uh, we do not uh, really uh, look into the issue of diversity, we may be we may be lagging behind in terms of you know our um, business uh, and the development uh, perspectives perhaps so um, cox has said that this resource if properly used has the potential to improve the quality of decisions made in that organization and enhance the quality of manpower in that organization. Earlier, in, earlier also we have seen that, that dealing with the uh, diversity issue is actually a management issue because it improves decision making in the organization. Then Jain and Verma, on, uh, they have said the two important trends of the 1990s are workforce diversity and growing competitive challenge as a result of globalization. Uh, Kirby and Richard 2000, they have said that manage, manage job involvement and organizational commitment of diverse workforce, only then perhaps you know we can get the best results. And uh, Kennedy and Averest, they have said to remain competitive, it is necessary to talk about to, em to embrace diversity. So, uh, we have to look at diversity a little more seriously, it looks like that. And uh, Robinson and uh, Dechant, their study we have already discussed earlier, they have said that compelling business reasons to manage diversity is because of the cost saving, managing the competition for the talent and driving business growth. With their study we have already uh, discussed you know, in, the, in the earlier part uh, of my dis discussion today. So, uh, coming to uh, Stringer's study, the focus on diversity to increase effectiveness and competitiveness. When we are talking about diversity, we have to increase the, the effectiveness and the competitiveness. Uh, in order to achieve these, we have to really view diversity as an important factor. Roosevelt's uh, study again, you know, we have discussed earlier and then what they have said that handling creativity and growth of diverse employee is extremely, extremely important for us to have the best business. Venkat Ratnam and Chandra's uh, study has suggested that face the challenge of diversity in managing people and also reap the opportunities in coping with these challenges. So, what we can see that there is a paradigm shift in the whole uh, movement of diversity. We have moved from the old, the earlier, I would not say very old, but the earlier paradigms to the newer, newer paradigms. We are now talking about the uh, employee uh, equity to employee Di manage how to manage employee diversity. We have also been discussing externally imposed uh, functions, imposed factors and now we are also trying to talk about internally driven factors. As I discussed short while from now ago that uh, uh, the, the internally driven that means within an organization and within an individual. 
within an individual which was rather uh, rather a neglected field i can say in the management literature even though psychologists have made a uh, lot of contribution uh, the uh, in in some of these factors but uh, but uh, not lot of advantage was taken earlier from these researches now uh, most of the studies which psychologists have done the applied psychologists we have also integrated those into the management uh, we can say literature action and formulation so these days we have become really enriched on the international sorry internal and driven uh, factor inter internally driven factors now uh, the focus on earlier group is also now the focus on individuals as well as on the groups both and the values uh, value uh, in in, uh, in terms of equality we are also valuing the differences see earlier many a times managers believe that everyone must be you know sort of be of the same type and and they should be behaving in the similar way but the diversity movement is suggesting that we should also value the differences because each individual is different you are different you are different um, everyone is different and as we have seen that what are the dimensions of diversity at the place of work so these are uh, the 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 uh, important aspects that a manager has to understand so he he or she has to be very sensitive to the these aspects uh, otherwise managing an organization where as we have understood that the human being is perhaps the the main uh, making the main contribution in the overall you know performance of the organization process one of the one of the major components there if we are neglecting that then perhaps we are not achieving the success as expected so the paradigm shift is there to towards you know the diverse uh, um, work culture and the diversity of people and diversity of human mind we can say and the diversity uh, of uh, also uh, social system so diversity becomes an important factor and the dimensions that we have listed um, well there are quite many and maybe you can do that exercise yourself listing the dimensions of uh, diversity uh, related to the management issues and uh, if uh, we develop you know some case studies we can take up you know the case studies uh, of one particular uh, diversity group and talk about it and that is what you know i'm thinking of uh, discussing in great details but uh, before that uh, what uh, i want to do is that we have conducted one study in one of the it sectors so i would like to first discuss that study and then i will talk to you about what diversity issue uh, i'm going to take up for another uh, sort of a um, in depth lecture i can't talk about in you know, all the issues uh, in such a short course okay but i'll take up you know at least you know at least one issue and the references to all these issues perhaps will come in all different uh, modules that we are uh, presenting uh, in this course the idea here is that we are trying to um, again you know make you uh, aware of the fact that we are all different and as a manager you have to appreciate uh, uh, appreciate you know uh, this this aspect the diversity shift also had has number of other factors we can uh, address just the system but nowadays we are addressing the total culture so there is a shift from just the system to the culture 
just the personal HR functions or the responsibility of all in coming to the management uh, functions, the responsibility of all in an organization. So, uh, from these paradigm shifts, I will take you to understand that we had conducted a study of the IT managers in one of the companies. This company has about 2000 uh, employees or maybe more uh, and uh, we had selected uh, the and the there is a uh, head office in Delhi. Uh, then uh, we have the all the uh, business centers in many uh, cities in India not only uh, east, west, west north, north, south, but many other cities. And there we selected the managers to find out the, about their performance. And so, the diversity uh, issues that we were discussing are related to the background of the managers. And we were trying to find out whether the the diversity makes any impact on the performance of these managers in this IT firm. So, while we were discussing this, we found, so, so, uh, so we have gone you know, in a very formal way to conduct this particular study. And here, after uh, uh, picking up the sample of man managers from there and trying to analyze these uh, uh, managers. Uh, we found that the when we try to analyze the correlation uh, coefficient of the diversity uh, studies, uh, we found that these are related to 14 human resource management factors. So, in this study, I will just give you an idea about the results of our study. The results of our correlation uh, analysis uh, in the four diversity variables uh, and 14 human resource management variables that uh, reveals that diversity variable of organizational hierarchy uh, with 11 human resource management factors uh, and the diversity uh, variable of age with 9 human resource management factors diversity variable of length of service in organization with 10 human resource management factors and the total work experience with 9 human resource management factors, they have shown significant relationship. So, uh, we have gone into like a um, social survey research design, the uh, survey research design framework and we collected uh, data from the managers and then uh, through, through a uh, sampling procedure. And uh, we have used, uh, we developed our own um, tool, a questionnaire, which we uh, factor analyzed. So, in this we included all those diversity variables, which we have just now come to know through our uh, literature, uh, the uh, research studies uh, and the various uh, theories that we have discussed just now. So, based on this, we had developed, you know, a tool, a questionnaire, which we factor analyzed. And based on that, then we have gone to um, the managers to find out whether these, uh, these factors have anything to do with the diversity issues. And this is what you know I was trying to uh, talk to you about that the some factors for example, uh, the uh, diversity uh, um, organizational hierarchy related to some 11 uh, human resource man management factor, the length of service related to some factors and so on. So, these are the results of those um, uh, studies and a, a massive survey that uh, we had conducted in one of the uh, leading 
uh, IT company which is which is uh, one of the uh, global companies functioning in India. In fact, that is an Indian global company I can say and uh, that has good business and there we had conducted uh, this, this study. So, the idea is that the diversity uh, uh, and that the diversity presents itself in different levels of hierarchy and should be given and people uh, in these levels should be given opportunity to be presented and tapped for the benefit of the organization when we are looking at you know the different levels of hierarchy. So, uh, then we move on to talk about the age factor as we said that the age was related to uh, some of the human resource management factors. So, when we try to correlate the age with some of the human relation uh, human resource management factors, we found that older people are less likely to relocate or to learn new skills than are the younger people and may have greater difficulty adapting to new technologies or changes in the market. Here uh, there are you know, there is reference also to um, some of the um, other theorizing. For example, when we are looking at uh, the management uh, of change issue uh, for the uh, for, for any individual for any person, we find that the resistance to change uh, increases with uh, age and that is why it is likely that older people might be resisting change for whatever reason. It is not necessary that, re, uh, that the change uh, whatever we are bringing is, is, uh, is uh, going to have a bad uh, impact or bad result, but people generally resist change uh, because uh, sometimes it may be just a fear of unknown or disturbing their balance some such uh, kinds of uh, feeling that people might have. In our discussion on uh, management of change, once again we are going to touch upon the issue of uh, resistance to change uh, by, by people and one of the examples is that the older people usually resist change. So, younger um, people are lower in the hierarchy because these are more or less, uh, more or less related. Uh, we can put in more new ideas. I am not saying that what is, what is the exact age limit after which people will start resisting, individual differences are there. Some people are extremely flexible even when they are quite senior and that is the asset of a manager. If a manager is not flexible in his thinking, very rigid in one's thinking, then well uh, his uh, management strategies are going to be different. And so, in this study also we have found this, this kind of a uh, result. In fact, I recollect one of the earlier studies which I had conducted with uh, some of the Indian managers uh, in, uh, in that was in relation to participative management as to how many um, managers you know they would like to have participative management. There also I had found that age was a factor in which where I found that the, uh, the senior people were not very much forthcoming with a new idea of participation. So, that was, that was another study, uh, uh, not this particular study of IT firm that was managers from different, uh, different uh, organizations. What we are trying to understand here is that the, uh, for example, age is one of the diversity factors and once we are in the role of a manager, we have to consider this as an important factor, that, that is the idea. 
Then uh, we move on to uh, talk about uh, uh, different companies. Now, different companies, uh, as uh, we have discussed, you know, when I was discussing the, uh, I was introducing uh, to you with different uh, management terms. We had talked about the organizational culture and the values and so on. And we did talk about that how the values and culture perhaps you know flow from the top to bottom, okay, and then it get, gets you know sort of institutionalized. So uh, the different companies have different internal culture, and and each company perhaps has a distinct identity of its own. Each company has its identity. And so, this is because the employees decide on what message to give to the workforce and the identity uh, also reflects uh, the themes that a particular organization might reflect okay, in the understanding of workforce issues. So, uh, when we are uh, looking at the organizational culture, we are basically trying to say that the identity, uh, like every individual has some identity, certain characteristics the person has uh, and every organization also has certain identity. And here the idea that we are trying to talk about is that the internal culture of an organization that also might impact. Uh, the people, those who are working and then in turn of course, the overall business. So, this is done today in, in today's business environment to attract, retain and gain commitment from employees. As we have also discussed perhaps earlier in some times and maybe later in some of the discussions at that point. Uh, is again going to come up in a big way uh, that the attrition rate is uh, is the question that managers have to deal with in today's uh, today's um, organizations. Okay, you have you hire someone very brilliant, perhaps a ten pointer, and you train him for your job. You give him good salary, everything, and he quits after six months. It's a, it's a loss to the company and attrition rates are increasing because of market competition and so many other factors of course, but one of the one of the major reasons could be that. And so, when we are looking at the issue of diversity, we can to a great extent retain people, get their commitment so that they have the intrinsic value to remain in that organization. They start thinking that organization as my organization. It is so difficult to imbibe this kind of a value, but then if you have people, those who start believing that this is my organization, then you are one of the fortunate managers perhaps. And so, in the diversity issue, we are also looking at these aspects. So, so, some of the, these are, uh, we can say the micro level or the finer aspects sometimes, you know, become great challenges for, for managers. So, the uh, emerging challenge for organizations is to find ways to creatively harness and maximize the benefits of diversity. Organizations must understand that diversity initiatives mm -hmm. Uh, signal shifts in the power dynamics. And so, we have to, so, so we have actually no choice uh, than to uh, say that I will not look at diversity, perhaps we have no choice. We have to look at diversity in the years to come, because that is a good business. And, uh, and, and that is where you know most of the, most of the policies, most of the modules, modules uh, and that we are going to uh, HR policies and I mean and the other modules that we are going to discuss you will find that the issue of individual differences might creep in and the issue of diversity might creep in. Even though we will be talking about 
so many solutions, so many um, uh, sort of uh, uh, strategies, but then individual differences uh, on, and the diversity factors have to be considered um, in, in our whole formulation of managing, because this is an important aspect of strategic management. So, managing diversity does not mean controlling or containing diversity. It means enabling every member of the workforce to perform uh, to his or her potential. And that is why we have to create such conditions that everyone can perform to one's own potentials. Thus, diversity at the workplace can have many fold ramifications and implications for progressive organizations, because the progressive organizations will need to mold the, the HR policies and strategies to not just to cope up you know, with diversity, but to manage reality. So, managing is reality and how do we really manage some of the factors this we have to consider and so the diversity is one such uh, factor which helps us in managing reality. So, in today's organizations this becomes extremely important. Given the inevitability of an increasingly diverse workforce and the growing categories of persons included under the rubric of diversity, using diversity at the workplace as a competitive advantage is an area worthy of greater attention, strategic human resource management research and studies in the coming years. So, when we are looking at these diversity factors in the years to come, we have to pay more attention to some of the issues of diversity. So, some of the studies which we have also conducted and if you uh, open up any, any book um, on the issue of managing, you will find that one of the important aspects of diversity is the issue of, uh, uh, of managing the diverse work group, diverse people, diverse society, diverse culture and uh, under uh, the, the, the heading of people we can say the highly committed people, highly motivated people, highly creative people, highly, uh, highly emotionally intelligent people. Uh, highly uh, people you know with a very matured personality and so on. So, the list uh, could be much much longer than what we are discussing. So, uh, what we are trying to understand here is that the dimensions of diversity are many at the individual level, at the level of groups, at the level of society, at the level of culture. Then at the that is at the one hand and at the level and in within an organization, uh, within an organization again you know there are groups, formal groups, there are uh, we can say informal groups and, uh, and there are uh, people, those who are highly motivated within an organization. So, as a cultural and the social uh, factor and as an organizational factor, as an individual factor, as a national factor, as a racial factor and uh, all these it becomes important. Even though with the globalization, we have uh, started sort of training managers uh, to some of the uh, some of the aspects you know when a manager perhaps goes to some other country, for example, learning language becomes very important. And uh, I recollect, you know, sometimes, you know, some of the um, students of IIT, they came and requested me for certain languages like Korean and um, uh, some, some of the Chinese and some other languages, whether, you know, we could 
um, arrange, you know, to teach those languages. So when I ask them that why do you want to learn these languages, we already have, you know, a number of other languages. The, the, uh, the reply was that we are going to now a diverse culture, I've got a job here and I've got a job there. And for which, you know, this becomes an extremely important factor. So, so we are trying to understand that diversity becomes an important challenge for us in the years to come. From here, we move on to understand one of the important aspects of diversity. In my next lecture, I will be picking up the issue of gender and I will talk to you about women in management which is just because I can't talk about all other things, so I've just picked up one, uh, uh, one topic for my next discussion that is women in management and we will see that how this diverse group, what happens to them and uh, how are they performing and uh, their quality of life and so on. So we will move on to the next lecture next time.